Hello and welcome to this D365 Finance and Operation EAM demo. This is going to be part of three presentations where I'll be looking at the overall setup of the system with inside Dynamics 365 or EAM. Then I'll be looking at how we generate the work orders, set that up, and then we'll look at the execution on the mobile and on the system. Okay, so in order to start this, I will go through and just talk about the overall setup. This is what we went over in the first presentation when we looked at the slides, but this overall concept shows how we set up the asset management structure. We use a process or functional locations and the functional location is really saying where is that asset. So if you have a number of production lines or process lines, that whole building will be in one location and then your lines would be in another set of locations. And across a line, then each area of that line can have its own sub level of a location. And what we do is we attach assets to those and these could be the overall asset, such as a process. And then we can break that down into the individual elements, such as the machine, the engines, the gearbox. And we can also include what we call rebuildables, which are things like motors and gearboxes, which come out and get repaired and get, go back in again, like inventory items in a sense. So that's the overall structure that we'll be talking about first, how we set that up. The second area we'll be looking at is in terms of how do you set up the maintenance plan, which will cover how we deal with uh, requests as well as we set up planned orders. But the most important part of that what we'll look at is the setting up the job types, which is what the maintenance engineer does when he goes out on site. And then the setting up of that overall process with counters and, and schedules or intervals to set up the overall schedule, which is a calendar of events, which are then turned into work orders, which have their own man hours, skills and resources and parts needed. And that's what we'll go over in the second part. And then the final part, we'll be looking at how the schedule is done to schedule workers and actually execute the work, whether that's on the laptop or on the mobile device. So the first part that we will look at is setting up the structure from the functional locations and the assets. Okay, so this is the screen that we'll see when we log into D365 and click on the asset management menu. You can see the overall structure that we have here. We have a couple of workspaces. We have the assets and the functional locations, which is going to be setting up our structure and our assets, which we'll go through just shortly. And then we have the rest of the areas in here, which is looking at the overall process. And then we have some setups that will look in the second part. So just to give you a quick view of the work order workspaces. This is an example of a, a workspace, which is just giving us some a view of the work orders, which will show you orders which are delayed, unscheduled. Now this can be configured to suit you. And uh, that will be one of the overall processes that we'll look at when we go through the implementation. But what I want to sh really talk about in here is, is these two areas here, the functional locations and the assets. The functional locations, when we look at that, uh, this is going to tell you how we've set up the overall structure of the business. And if I click on just one, this example of the extrusion lines, you can see on this right hand side, this is how we're laying out the business. So we have different functional locations doing different things. So this is an area and a plant, but it could be a site, it could be a customer location, it could be anything, but it's really just giving you a location about where those assets are. With inside that, you can then give different levels of the locations of those assets. Now this is made up of a overall plant, which has got some extrusion lines and underneath each of the extrusion lines, there are certain other locations which are do, do with cooling, vaping, vapor and hoppers. Sometimes the function locations and the asset location tree is the same. Sometimes they're different, but just giving you a quick sort of view on that one. We can just hide that for the second. This will show you that at this particular location, it gives you summary information 
Um, it gives you the in number of children. So there's three extrusion lines. There's one asset held at this location. The asset location is active. In other words, this is a new piece of plant that's available. We've got two work requests and seven work orders focusing just on that particular asset itself or this particular functional location. And then there's information along the top, which gives you the ability to see what you have on there, how much cost you spent and what assets and work orders you have on there. So you have a functional location view. Looking at an example of a functional location, you can see it's got a basic definition. It's got a view about which assets is installed. So it was one of those. And then we can hold attributes, but we can also do what is called a maintenance plan and a maintenance round, which basically says that on this particular process, we have a maintenance plan to manage that whole of that functional location. Now it could be that this is going to be mainly condition maintenance plans for that functional location, but it can be anything you want it to be. We also have a concept of rounds. Whereas uh, a maintenance plan is looking at the unit as a, as a process, a, a functional round or maintenance round is going around and doing like a weekend work of going to do the inspections. I may lo look at all the uh, process lines in one go and that might be on my general maintenance round and again I can have an address about where that is if it's outside it but I can also associate workers to it and that's going to be quite important later when we start to give to people is well, where are they I can only give them work with inside the the locations and in a sense the assets that they belong to so that's the overall view of of that um, if we come up and have a look at it from the asset perspective again we have a view so this is a slightly different view this is giving you an asset location view so here we have um, how we've set up all our assets and in the example that we've got in here the asset locations and the functional locations are very much in tune but they could quite easily be different it's giving you a view about well this is the location that we're looking at we've got similar type of information um, against the asset itself, but it gives you a, an overall view of how that asset is pulled together. This is useful if you just want to be able to, to view how all your assets are sort of uh, linked together. But we're going to have a look at it from an asset perspective. So this is a, a view of my assets. And we can see we have uh, a general ones down in there. We'll go and have a look at that extruder that we were looking at. And as you can see, this one actually does have a, an asset tree. We can see all the assets that are underneath that area. So this would be the main line. And these would be the main units within there, the gearbox and the metal detector, for example. We can see how many maintenance requests we have on it. We can see the uh, works orders that we've got on that particular process because how critical it is in here. We can see when we're carrying out maintenance work. If it was loaned, if we'd loan this asset, we could get that information and we also have these things called counters so we can find out what the temperature of that one is or how many hours it's worked and how many production hours etc gives you overall view from there um, we also have information on its state so assets can have become into and out of life the overall process around it has two two views one is an asset view so we can move assets around we can raise requests we can look at works orders we can look at the checklist that we have to do against the assets we can do maintenance downtime when they're down um, look at all the transactions that have been done against it manage their main preventative maintenance as well as their life and on the general tab we have areas such as adding images and looking at faults and condition assessments and then uh, looking at the overall cost of that asset so it's quite in informative in terms of how it looks uh, if we just drill down to an asset in terms of the details we can see it's general identification, the fixed assets. Now, this is quite important when we look at counters and we look at the um, part about whether it's a maintainable asset or not. In other words, uh, a maintainable asset in terms of it's rebuildable, we put it into stock and then come back. So things like a gearbox. The resource is giving you an indication that this asset is linked to a manufacturing resource. So if I put in a works a production order and it uses a 
this particular machine, that machine is 3115 and that has a fixed asset in terms of the books of machine 00508. Two perspectives we can look at that. One, we can say that if that machine has been used, we can calculate these hours and hours and quantity produced and use that as a counter to drive our maintenance schedule. The other thing is that we can also do is that we can link it through to our our fixed assets to look at this depreciation and if we eventually were to sell it or to bring it in we, we've got that as a control. Um, the other thing that's worth looking at from there we can uh, have general notes about it we can have its general attributes and we can hold information about its vendor what its warranty information is where it is as I said if it was movable outside the process and then we have the overall maintenance plan which we'll look at which is basically a set of work that we do on that asset which is going to ensure the integrity over its life um, so these are the uh, maintenance plans and we could also have functional maintenance plans in terms of its where it is within inside its its process its uh, position within inside the factory and then it's also got maintenance round which we do on this particular case daily and weekend and there's also areas for functional uh, financial dimensions to, to manage the costs. So that gives you an overall process now of the functional locations. We do have processes in there in terms of the active locations and setting up your assets and locations to bring them into and out of, of life uh, in terms of the life cycle. But we can look at that as part of the setup. Okay, so that's the end of this first part. The second part, we'll be looking at more about how we set up assets and maintenance plans and jobs with inside the system. For more information about asset management and asset management thinking, as well as other videos in this series, please use the link below. Thank you.